We're in uh, Fender's uh, final assembly in our Corona plant in California. This is where the guitars are finally assembled. When we do a line guitar that's a signature model for a specific artist, the artist either comes out directly to manufacturing or one of our builders will meet with them to get all the specifications of the guitar. And the specifications is everything from the electronics, the pickup, the colors that will be on the guitar, and also uh, the shape of the neck, which is very, very important. Normally on a, a typical Fender, the neck would be flattened out. In the 50s, it had a, a, a pronounced V to it. Uh, Billy Gibbons is one that wants an absolute V. Um, Clapton's is a little softened, and so is Buddy Guy's guitar. And, uh, Eric Clapton wanted a white guitar, and then specifically, he played it in Japan. And we all, I mean, the next day, we got hundreds of calls, our dealers saying, what's this white guitar, this new model? And it's like, well, it's not in the line. So I called marketing and said, we better add this to the line because he's playing it. Uh, this uh, is a signature model from the hottest of the hottest of the European guitarist, uh, Yngwie Malmsteen. And um, he sent us his guitar, and he scallops the neck. And this is something new to most guitar players, where he scallops the neck. And this allows him to play faster because he doesn't have to push the string down to touch the fretboard. A big part of what we do as a service to celebrities, as musician celebrities, is also film and and uh, TV, and that's becoming a very big um, part of my responsibilities at Fender. And one of the first big projects I worked on is with Tom Hanks, who is also a guitar player, and he had a script for a movie that his first movie is going to direct, and he wrote called That Thing You Do, and it took place in 1964, and he sent me the script to say, you know, plug in all the Fender equipment, literally, that would work in 1964. A everything had to be authentic, and it had to be with, right within the year. Recently we did Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg, and he's left-handed, so we had to do left-handed guitars from the 80s, um, which Mark not only was nice enough to give back to us, but also sign a guitar for charity for us, too. Nothing is really too out of the realm when, you know, artists come to us. Um, Eric Clapton wanted a car, uh, guitar to match his blue Mercedes that he wanted to play on the Prince's Trust Fund, and um, we did it, and, you know, he sends this photo of him standing next to his Mercedes because we got the color right. Well, we used Mercedes paint to do the color. Um, speaking of cars, the group the cars, um, when they were still together, Elliot Easton, the guitar player, wanted a hot-rodded guitar, and he's left-handed, which actually is this way, and um, he, we created this guitar, the Sparkle, Green Sparkle. We did the hot-rod pinstriping like the cars would you know, normal hot rod would have, and it was just such a great piece, it ended up being the um, back cover and some of the artwork on the Cars box set. This is the division of Fender that has most interaction, the most direct interaction with the artists themselves. This is the custom shop, this is where they come to get their handmade instrument to perfection, exactly what they want. They're, we call it the Dream Factory, and of course that sign, Welcome to Paradise, is what the artist sees when they first enter the building. So if you want to follow me, we're going to paradise. This is a re replica of a 1952 Telecaster. And it's still one of our best-selling guitars. The great thing about it is it hasn't changed in, you know, 50 years. It's pretty much the same instrument as Leo Fender designed it. And if you see Keith Richards or you see Bruce Springsteen, any of those tours, you'll see them playing these guitars. And normally what they'll do is they'll buy them a dozen at a time. Sting had one bass that he took everywhere with him, and he, even his road crew is like, hey, you know, this thing's starting to fall apart. Can't you guys do something? So what we did for Sting was we made two exact replicas of the bass. And when Sting played the Greek theater, both bases were on stage, and he couldn't pick which one was his real bass and which one was the replica that we made. This is a brand new Fender bass guitar. Now, before you thought we lost our mind, um, this is what we call relicking. This is taking a brand new instrument and aging it, and aging it based on how guitars really age and how the paint chips and get belt buckles, you know, scratches on the back, and how it gets worn down, and Originally, what happened, how this came to be, was uh, Keith Richards had gotten a brand new Telecaster from us for the Stones tour and sent it back and said he really loved it, but he said, I want it more like me boots, you know, worn in. I want it worn in. And so they kind of got it, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, beat up, beat up. So they beat it up, but really studying old photos of his guitars and things, and they sent it back to him, and he said, brilliant. 
And the great thing that Fender has discovered is by relicking and beating the guitar up, you can actually twi uh, charge twice as much money. So we love that part too. For me, it's wonderful to work with somebody like Eric Clapton, who I idolized when I was growing up. And, you know, um, meeting someone like that or being able to work with them is just, you know, like a dream come true for me. And then to find out that they're great people, that they're really wonderful, you know, and behind the scenes we don't see them as the stars, although we still re respect their talent and who they are, but they, they're treating us as equals because we represent something in their career that's very important, you know? And, and if they didn't get the right guitar, once the guitar is right, the management loves us, the record companies love us, the movie producers, whoever it is. Once the star is happy, everybody else is like, you guys are great.